Well, as, a, as a recovering Logic and DP user from back in the day, there's, there's, uh, there was definitely a, a moment of truth, you know, with Cubase when it comes to like time warp and expression maps mm. and, you know, visibility filters, all that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, you can sort of have your cake and eat it in terms of having an insane template, but you don't have to see all of it at the same time. And yeah. Yeah, really. All that kind of stuff is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to see like when you, you know, because I also started on Logic, mm. and when you change tools, how the workflow kind of starts to adapt to whatever that tool is. Like yeah. the expression map thing for me was was huge. Yeah. Um, I know Hans used control, uh, the program changes um, more, but I, the expression maps, it, it opens a it's whole It's kind of crazy world. what you can yeah. do, because we, we have these um, MIDI, uh, I can't remember what they're called, but you put them on the MIDI track, like, and they basically, when you press an expression map, it not only prints it in the, uh, in the, score. In the score, it then yeah. also sends it back to the iPad. Yeah. So you can like select a track, and your iPad will update with just the sounds on that particular track. Oh, okay. um, it's it's kind of insane. Those, yeah. those little hacks just mean you're sort of you're not looking at eight thousand tracks. You're looking at a hundred. You know? Right. It's, yeah. it's kind of kind of awesome. Yeah. Without the sequence, I wouldn't be writing. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's as simple as that. You know, it's like um, since I thought uh, since I was always criticized for my poor penmanship. I thought, you know, one more subject to be criticized in would be poor penmanship in music, you know, it was bad right. enough to, to, <laughs> in German, you know. So, so, I, so I thought computers were a fun way to go. Um, and I, I think, I think the, the latest release of Cubase, I mean, partly what, what I liked was that, that, that a lot of little things under the hood that improve one's penmanship sort of mm -hmm. happened, yeah, totally. you know, that, that, that make you, that make it more um, an artistically, um, artistically sort of um, aesthetically pleasing program. Right. You know, I, I think that was actually quite important because I think the end of the day what happens is with any computer program, you very much buy not a piece of software which is anything other than the personality of the programmers. Mm. So, 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 so mm. I quite like that suddenly, mm. you know, somebody went, hmm, got to tidy it up, got to tidy right. my sock drawer up a little bit. Right. Yeah, it's crazy you know? the difference that makes, like just the yeah. clarity of yeah. the tracks yeah. down to the, you know, you're sort of encouraged right. more to use the, right. the, the plugins that come with the mixing. Mm -hmm. yeah. so but it, it's, it's never really the big things, it's the little things right. in Cubase that, that kind of, make it stand out. I think yeah. I'm probably the only one who came from using Sonar, uh, which, was a, which was a Cakewalk product back in yeah. the day. And and you know, like any dog, I you kind of- I had a problem with something called Cakewalk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Somehow diminishes the, 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 I don't know. You know, the thing about making music. Right. Well, right. but but whatever it is, you, you uh, create your own workflow like with it, you know, and so, and the same happened with when I, you know, was first introduced to Cubase and, you know, you start to kind of take all these little things like, oh yeah, I can I can duplicate things this way, or I can mm. turn audio and put it into musical mode and right. just change mm -hmm. tempos. It and it it saves so much time. So much time. And and the amount of changes and things that we have to do mm. as film composers, well, it, yeah, it's I mean, life saving. Yeah. Oh my just, god, just yeah. the time transform page, just yeah. that, and and the ability to see different controllers on different lanes. That, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, just absolutely. that yeah. one thing. Multiple instruments. With exactly. Well, able to yeah. Yeah, actually, actually, we can make this a really short. Uh, we can make this the <laughs> shortest interview in the world. <laughs> you know, Cubase has. Controllers, you can see all the lanes that are attached to that node. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can see your expression maps down there. Exactly. Done. Right. right. Pretty much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind yeah. of why where you spend you your life. Why, why would you not want that? Right. 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 You know, that's where you spend your life. Yeah. yeah. And the ability, yeah. like, just to figure out some kind of harmony, yeah. select that note, right. mm -hmm. yeah. copy in place, mm -hmm. right. and paste in place, rather. I mean, that just in terms of, like, orchestrating cues, it's the simplest thing, these little functions, but yeah. without those, there's just no idea how you could work at any kind of speed. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, time warp, though. We should talk about time warp. Why? <laughs> I, I just because well, for me I, that's, I the, have, that's the deal breaker. I haven't me. used it much. Well, I know, you I know like, a lot you don't about like it. it. No, no, no the I love it. Like, I love it yeah. Time warp is like, yeah. There's, if something doesn't have that, the ability to just play without a click, or even just for yeah. making tempo maps. Right, right. It's kind of insane. 
Yeah. Yeah. Disco boy, he yeah, just doesn't. I know, it's just 136 BPM. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm missing a trick, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Well, this is sad to say. I mean, I'm, I, I'm probably historically the guy who, who's been at this for the longest. Mm -hmm. God, I feel old. <laughs> It works for old people, except the typeface is starting to get a little blurry. In <laughs> but I think that might have something more to do with my prescription for my glasses. Um, Were you using it from day one? No, well, no, I wasn't using it from day one. I was using a Fairlight. And I was using a mm -hmm. Roland Microcomposer MC8, right. huh? then an MC4, then a Fairlight, mm -hmm. then Logic on the Atari, mm -hmm. then... I kept having arguments with those guys. I'd mm. say, you know, wouldn't it be cool if you could have two screens? You know, like mm. you'd have the notes on one screen and the, you know, sort of your project page on the other. Right. And they'd go, that's a crazy idea. That's a stupid <laughs> idea. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. You know, and then and then I met the Cubase guys, and it was, you know, and they sort of went, oh yeah, that's mm. yeah, you can have two screens. You right. know, that yeah. sounds like quite a good idea. Yeah. You know, and it it I mean, uh, so many of these ideas happened over. Like good dinners with Manfred and, you know, uh, just, I don't know, a wow. couple of bottles of wine and mm. you, you suddenly had something on your second screen, you know? <laughs> so it's all, you know, it all depends on how you mm. present the idea. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we um, do. So that, that, you know, that, that, that made me change. And, yeah. and, you know, and at first it was, you know, I, I was warned it was going to be a highly unstable program. Um, and the first copy of SX, which came out just before Christmas, I remember. I mean, there were things, <laughs> things truly that I desperately needed missing. And um, God, Wolfgang Grundus came over over Christmas with with somebody else, and all they were doing they were just in my room writing software in in the room while I was trying to write a project. Wow. Uh, that was actually pretty, wow. you know. Not, none of us had a Christmas, you know, but, but, you know, we made it. Wow. That's probably why each version feels like there is a tangible <coughs> improvement. You know, it's, it's not so incremental, it's yeah, like something right. big. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I actually think, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys still work the same way, but um, th 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 there's like a, a, a clever sort of way of doing the improvements where if, you know if you have an idea to do something mm -hmm. it has to be it it has to be done within a certain amount of time mm -hmm. and not take the whole system down right. so, you know. and i guess you can sort of hack things also with the macros that's what, yeah. that's what blows my mind is yeah, how right. deep you can go in customizing and sort of almost find workarounds which then may suddenly appear just as a much easier method in right, the version yeah, right. but there's a way to sort of hack it yeah. Prior to that, I'm amazed he's written any music lately. Customizing his macros. I've talked on behalf of my wonderful yeah. assistants who don't sleep. Yeah. 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 I don't understand any of this. Yeah, script. neither do I. Yeah. It. yeah, it's just like, oh, that's cool. Well, a couple a couple months ago, we had Greg uh, come over and and show us some of the new features, and that was really interesting because I think especially like for for the three of us being in the same room and realizing that we tend to do things differently. Yeah. And we'll, he'll bring up a new, uh, a new feature, and we'd say, well, I do it like this. And Steve right. does it some completely other, other way. <laughs> and it's, it's funny how you, can, how you can find your own method. It's the same program. Right. We have the, right. the same things under the yeah. hood. But yeah. you tend to gravitate towards whatever your, your personal method is. Like, mm -hmm. Like, except, except, really, you should just be using Greg's method because ultimately that's the most problem. Yeah. <laughs> but it's you so know. hard to implement that right. because you have yeah. this workflow right. that yeah. you've yeah. spent so memory. much time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On. But it is interesting. Like we were just talking the other day, because, um, you know, I came from, uh, you know, my first laptop and sequencing. I didn't have any RAM, so I was constantly printing audio. Mm. So I, I came from this almost like like making a record, like, you know, you, you sequence something, you edit it, and then you print it. So I would just keep gathering audio tracks. And so I still kind of use it in that way where I'm mm. playing everything in and then I'll edit in, in MIDI afterwards. Right. And then we were talking and, you know, about the way that you do something, which is 
more sort of straight programming. Right. Mm. Which, yeah, like I'll, I'll just take a note and duplicate it, you I know, if it's 16s, yeah. and then just mm. do step input and just play mm. the notes because mm. I'm, I, I used to be a good player, but I'm not so mm. much well, anymore. Okay. Uh, so it's just easier. But, but, you know, but that is actually an interesting point because actually, no, it's, it's an interesting point of, I think it's an interesting point of many reasons, um, that the technology influences the way you're you, you compose. Yeah. Oh, completely. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And so now we are finding ourselves uh, working on a project that I programmed originally on Cubase VST in 1992, mm -hmm. right? So we had to actually go and find old computers that could read the disks, put them into SX3, that was the last thing that could translate into Cubase mm -hmm. SX, right? Um, so that we could use those files. And I think it was you or you who were, who were saying that, you know, the, why, why were there so many tempo shifts oh, yeah. going on? Mm -hmm. Well, because it used to be so easy to actually go and conduct mm -hmm. the music right. in mm -hmm. Cubase, which you now can't do anymore. And, and my whole writing style has changed because mm -hmm. it's impossible to it's not impossible, but it's it's certainly not as musical anymore yeah. to do it. Right. So you know there are all these people who are <laughs> complaining about why why is film music so static? Mm -hmm. You know, well because um, uh, it's it's you know I, I was used to one way of doing it, but on the other hand, you, you're you're pretty good at the old. Well, what what you all over the place. I stuff. don't know. I mean, yeah. I, I come from that place of just you know improvising and right. playing. Oh people. yeah, 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 and, yeah. Right. And, and with time, I mean, again, going back to my little time warp love, uh, yes. is, is that thing where you can basically because in DP, which I used to love by the way, because it, you had this thing called the conductor track, mm -hmm. where you could play back a sequence and then on a key you just tap the, you basically create a recording of a click track. Yeah. But then you had to make sure your performance was right and you'd often get it slightly off and it wasn't quite. Right. But yeah, this ability to just like improvise and you can be all over the shop yeah. and then decide what your grid is. Is it, a, is it a measure? Is it a semi-quaver, a 16th note? And then just move the grid, like the, the MIDI becomes mm -hmm. static and you move the grid to fit your performance. And then you can, you know, it takes a lot of sort of, it's a lot of programming, yeah. but that thing where you're thinking ahead, this has to be played by an orchestra who need to understand the kind of musical direction right. of this thing, and um, it actually came from like. That. But really, that is how Lion King was originally done. Yeah, yeah. and and it makes all the difference. Just that yeah. little bit of space before a huge climax, so people can breathe to deliver the downbeat. Those little things, you know, they sort of naturally come. And it's, for me, that was when I saw my. It was one of my friends using Cubase. Actually, before I came here, I just thought, whoa. This is insane. Um, Makes me so sad. I used to have friends. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I know like this thing of the minimalism too, because yeah. uh, back in the, the MC50 days, when my dad when was, he bought me an MC50 and didn't know what to do with it, but it was just eight tracks. You can sort of, that discipline of not having to instantly or orchestrate. Right. Really? Uh, because I, I went exactly the other way. Really? I, I found polyphonic, I mean in a traditional mm. sense, polyphonic writing by only having eight voices available mm. was really important. So you would yes. never write a block chord. Right. You know, you had your eight players basically right, and, right. and you better made it. Yeah, voicing. Vo vo to get your voicings right. Totally. So it was a good lesson. Yeah, I was just saying, I, th I couldn't agree more. And just, But that thing of not having to immediately orchestrate. Right. You know, being able to have like the top half of your screen as a sketch, yeah. and the bottom yeah. half with all of your violins and flutes and so on. It right. it does sort of it, it kind of encourages you to I think be a bit more disciplined. Yeah. You know, not yeah, sort of no, imme sure. immediately go. Well, this flute sample is going to carry this tune. Maybe the tune isn't good enough. You well, know? right, because you always write around the sample. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Right. Yeah, I, I suppose you do. I mean. Do you really? To the strength of that. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, that's what I found, I mean, working on School Lectures Am, where it, it was all going to be played together. It was like, actually, forgetting about the samples was the key, because, you know, you can spend so long programming a timpani roll or yeah. 
just you know the, a legato line and by the time you've done that you probably lost faith in the tune mm. and and actually just like starting only with piano and that was like the whole cue is just like four piano tracks and then you'd move on to the next cue and then a couple of weeks later you come back and and flesh it out yeah. that's incredibly freeing and i found that weirdly you know cubase like massively facilitated that process because of the, you know there's little things like pasted origin where you can grab yeah, that yeah, top yeah, line, yeah, sure. chuck it on the on the yeah. oboe, or whatever, yeah. mm -hmm. and and it's like that speed of orchestration. It, it's it's very fluid. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's. I mean, I mean that, that, that's part of the. I, I, I love making a piano map and then orchestrating yeah, the best, out right? from there. Because the orchestration yeah. is so much more fun, yeah, yeah. less painful. And, and, and it actually takes me, it doesn't take me that long mm. to write a really long piece in piano. And exactly. as I'm writing it, having all these ideas. And then, it, and, no then, and then I can spend an endless amount of time <laughs> right. you know, yeah. Yeah. Filling, exactly. filling in yeah. colors, yeah. You know, which it, is really fun. Yeah. yeah. And that, calls back to how you know it was always done before computers yeah. Yeah. that was the process yeah. um, and it kind of you don't feel ashamed to have 90 tracks which, which is going to be played by you know four groups of, of musicians it's, right yeah yeah the piano map to me is such a double-edged sword because I'll, I'll usually start like that as well and the feeling of accomplishment once I finish, <laughs> okay, I, I, I did yeah, this I've cue. written it now. I, I wrote yeah, it exactly. Yeah. And then, and then yeah. you come back the next thing, you're like, oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> right. pretty, so much to do. Because it opens up the devilish door to possibilities. Mm -hmm. It, it can open up the, uh, the, the even worse than devilish door to indecision. Because um, you, you can do anything. You know, they always used to say this, you know, like every piece of software and every synthesizer that ever came out always said unlimited right, and, right. And, and all the sounds in the universe right. and uh, everything you can think of and da 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 um, And now we're actually there and um, uh, now we have to work very hard at being disciplined mm -hmm. and, and not using everything you think of, but um, making a decision about what is appropriate and mm. and how best to uh, you know what, uh, I don't care if it's a movie or if it's a song or if it's a uh, it's a uh, I don't know song you're writing while sitting in prison you know it's like uh, whatever it is the, 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 you have to go and limit mm. the possibilities totally. to uh, other, otherwise life will just slip away mm. um, I don't open Cubase to get my ideas out, I, I get my ideas in my head, and um, to this day, I think I, I, I think the, the 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 customization we have done to the program with mm -hmm. the touch screens, etc. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the real gold is exactly. for for yeah. for being fast about mm. this stuff. It becomes almost like an instrument. Yeah, right. it feels oh, like you're playing an organ, and yeah. you know if you if you have you know, like you say, you, you're formulating something, I do you might sketch it on paper or, or wherever, and then that ability to just put it in and then you're instantly dealing with expression yeah. and velocity, but also just, you know, t time manipulation, all those things. That, like you say, the touch screens just make it feel like it's something, it's not just mouse and mm -hmm. keyboard. But, but you know, there's, there's this funny thing where everybody's, for, everybody's always going on about how great it is when they just manage to get an idea so quickly into you know, mm. RAM or whatever, mm. um, because it's unusual. It's not unusual because it's, it, you know, the program is so good. It's mm. actually unusual to have a really, really good idea right. just mm -hmm. come to you. Especially yeah. if you're in record. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, because we are, hence retro, retro, retro spectral record, record yeah. is brilliant. Yeah. 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 But, the, but the whole point is, is most Decent music, most good ideas actually need a lot of time to think about. Yeah, true. That's true. You know, and and um, what the directors call procrastination, we actually call very very valuable yes. writing time. Right. And 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 I mean, you know, what are we? We we are architects of music. You know, we we we, we must make sure that the foundation is solid enough to to have our dream castles exactly. not. Mm -hmm. Topple over in the last wheel. Absolutely you know? right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, so, so the, uh, the, uh, the the instant gratification that you mentioned is actually, I think, um, uh, rather sad. You know, a pathetic way of writing music. Mm. Mm. Can you imagine doing what you have to do? The scale and time of your projects, can you imagine working without Cubase? Yes, it would be much faster. Um, because I would go and write a top line and fill in some of the middle st stuff on the pianos or on, on, on paper and give it to a load of orchestrators. Right, right. Mm. It's, it's so fascinating. Actually, well, hang on, you just did a mo movie like well, that. What he's just described is sort of utopia in a way. Right. And I mean, kind of what you invented back in the 90s of having orchestral samples where filmmakers can actually come and touch the music and you can change it in real time. It's not a surprise. That is such a powerful and useful tool. But at the same time, the process to get it to that point, mm -hmm. you're basically producing a final product which is a sketch. Right. And, yeah. and, right. and actually the time you could spend with sketching and being inventive and being free mm -hmm. of all that. I mean, I just literally found that on Shazam. It was like the most, so things just keep to, keep flowing and you keep going, oh, right. what would happen if we tried this? Mm -hmm. But then again, I mean, personally, you know, the, 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 the facility in Cubase to divide the screen in half, just a simple thing like that. Mm -hmm. So the top half is the piano sketch, the rest is the, the beat you touch later. The, mm -hmm. the discipline of that and like hiding those tracks, simple things. Mm -hmm. And also the freedom from the click track, you know, to just to kind of like, and also in meetings too, those crazy moments where you know, a director's, yeah, yeah. A director's going, that yeah. doesn't work, yeah. and you just sort of start noodling on the string patch and you're not in record, yeah. and they go, that's it, don't change a thing. And if without retrospective record, you'd be, well, yeah, it wouldn't be the best. It's just, you know, no matter, I think, what program you're using, it's at the end of the day, just a tool to get your it's ideas out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for whatever reason, it can even be as simple as the aesthetics of the program, which right. really important, uh, really important mm -hmm. yeah. that for whatever reason, the, yeah. the four of us obviously gravitate towards Cubase yeah. quite a lot. And yeah. I think whatever is making you feel comfortable or yeah. feeling like you can get your ideas out, you know, exactly all, all the, the clarity. Yeah. But Eva always said that you know, the best sequencer is the one you know. Yeah, right. and, yeah. and, and it, from that point of view, it, you know, it's it's an extension of the paper. And the yeah, sorry. Um, so, so no is the question. <laughs> <laughs> In three uh, different yeah. ways. We've got a new marketing slogan. Thank you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you, you must not misunderstand me. You can go and do ordinary and serviceable, brilliantly very quickly in Cubase, but to go and make something which uh, is of value and of some distinction and of some beauty, it doesn't matter if it's Cubase or it doesn't matter what it is, it takes time, mm. you know? And, um, you, you know, you're, you're either a musician, which you start being when you are I don't know. I would say two and a half years old. I think. I, th I think. You know. Don't give me all that crap about lawyers and do doctors and dentists having done all this studying. I think we've studied for much longer just to be able to enable us to tell in our extraordinary language to tell the story of humanity. Or if uh, you know, if, if you want me to be pretentious, and I am quite happily be pretentious, being German. Um, don't minimize, don't minimize the value of having time. Mm -hmm. Don't minimize the value of being able to dig really into the expression, right. the, the controllers. Don't minimize the performance value that, that, that you get out of the thing. And it takes time. It takes time to learn, not just learn the program, but if whatever piece of music you're writing. You, we're, we're, we're constantly being asked to write new things. We're not really an evolving group of composers. We're constantly, um, you know, uh, making revolutions in music. I mean, it's, the question always is, we want something new, we want something fresh, right. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so we need something which is flexible enough that allows uh, us the possibility to learn how to be flexible, right. how, to, how to get this new style mm -hmm. under our fingers. Exactly. You know, and so uh, I hope you will enjoy my country and western heavy metal <laughs> uh, psychedelic uh, string quartet. <laughs>